it's great to be with you here on the polls uh, this afternoon as low voter turnout, allegations of doubling of voting and also cancellation of the entire process in some parts of the country mask the district level elections. We'll touch base with some of our correspondents live on the ground as more than 60,000 candidates contest to lead the assemblies until uh, and also the units committees in some 6,200 electoral areas across the country uh, on the day of voting here on the Join News channel uh, and on the polls will be going across the country bringing you the latest. Also the Ghana Immigration Service is revoking this afternoon the residential permit of spokesperson for the new force Shalima Abusi. We have details as the Immigration Service says she is due for repatriation later today. Knew that there's the likelihood that they'll be behaving in the manner they are behaving this way. And this is so arbitrary. This should not be tolerated in any democracy. I'm so, so disappointed. Uh, Pete, we'll get uh, the reason as to why that is happening. And later in the bulletin as well, we hear, uh, of course, more from what on the floor of the House in Parliament where lead sponsors of the anti-gay bills and George is pushing uh, for Parliament to head to the Supreme Court to seek some interpretation on Article 108 of the Constitution. We have details as President Akufando refuses to sign some private members' bills, arguing it demands financial commitment from the Consolidated Fund, hence the proposal should come from the executive. All of that and more coming your way here on The Pulse with me. This is going to join you as independent, fearless and credible. The Pulse, as always, is brought to you by Global Communities, Digni Lu, Affordable Safe Sanitation. Don't forget that we're on DSTV Channel 421, Go TV Channel 125. And we're back with the details for you shortly. Please stay with us. And it's uh, D-Day, as we all know it, because this afternoon of low voter turnout, allegations of doubling of voting and also cancellation of the entire process in some parts of the regions and country uh, has characterized this district level elections. We know that more than 66,000 candidates are contesting to lead some 6,200 electoral areas across the country. Uh, so we touch base with some of our correspondents uh, this afternoon who are on the grounds as we start from the greater Accra region, Pokos in the Ghan North constituency to be precise, where a twin faced a peculiar challenge uh, with a software that replaces, uh, of course, uh, the indelible ink as a marker for voters who cast their ballot. Uh, my colleague Sweetie Abochi has been uh, following up on that story for us and comes through with us. Still on monitoring the electoral processes in this year's district-level election, we've moved from Ghan Central to Ghan North, where we are catching up with Dr. John Halm, who is the uh, parliamentary candidate-elect on the NDC ticket for this uh, constituency. Honorable, thank you for joining us for a brief conversation. Thank you very much. I'd like to know, in your perspective, how, what have you observed so far, and what do you think about the electoral processes since morning? Well, uh, it's, it's very good. So far, so good. A uh, few places that are visited this morning the exercise is going on smoothly um, one or two things has been observed that is the turnouts at certain places are quite a bit low uh, but coming to Pokwasi electoral area I realize the turnout is much appreciable we know that the NDC is not particularly excited about the uh, not using the indelible ink as we've done for years now. And what do you think? Because some of the officials have told us that they've not had any problems yet with the software. What do you think or what have you observed, in your opinion, the processes without the indelible ink? Well, uh, it, it's not the traditional thing we know of uh, our election processes in Ghana. Uh, so it's quite a new thing, which I think is not the best for us. What about, I think it's, it's a recipe for, for any disaster because someone can go and then come back again. But because it's a community, many people know of, you know, themselves. And so therefore, probably that may be as a check. But the reality is that it's not the best thing that we want to welcome in this country because that is the only identification 
that indicate that one has really gone out to vote. And so if there is no any identification, it means that the system is open. Anyone at all can come in again and then vote two, three times, which is could be vote rigging, which is not the best for us. Still here at the Gun North constituency at the Methodist Church polling station where we had a situation involving two um, women, twins, where one person came earlier to exercise a franchise. The system had some challenges capturing her fingerprints, but she went through the facial recognition system successfully and was able to cast her ballot. The, twin, the second sister came in and was unable to the machine was unable to recognize her fingerprints and her facial features. It appears because the first sister, who is a twin sister, had already been captured in the system, it is repeating as an already registered and voted person. We're speaking to the uh, polling officer, the presiding officer, who tells us that this is the first time they're having any challenges at all with the software. However, there's a possibility that uh, it could be the same person who's posing as two people. But we've had people, family and friends, tell us that they know these two women. They are familiar with them and they are twins. And we even spoke to her mo their mother, who also is a twin. So the situation we just witnessed between the two sisters who claim they are twins and the system has already picked one person and is rejecting the other person's fingerprints. Can you tell us exactly what happened? I think you just narrated it. They are twins. And it seems the other sister came and votes. So when the second person came in, when he put his finger on the thing, he's rejecting. It means she has uh, uh, voted already. So I think it's Maybe I don't know if blood-related issue or facial recognition or what. But I think if they could have used the indelible ink, when this one is in, they will know that, no, this is a different person. So they can call two partners that, or the agents so that they can rectify because definitely the name should be different. In the register. So they may know that, oh, this was a different person. This also is a different person. And I, I think they said this report has been coming from other places for twins or maybe sisters, if not maybe twins. So I think this will be worried. So in this case, the other person did not vote because they said they have nothing to do about it. So the other person did not vote. Did you see that machine going off? You said you saw the machine going off. Yes. The machine go off. But I don't know the reason why, why the machine go off. Does this inspire confidence in you? Do you think that we are ready for election 2024 on the back of what we just witnessed? Hmm. Unless if they check it, maybe 2024 it will be okay for us. Yes. Mm. Do you know the people personally, the, the women? Do you know the twins personally? Yes, I know them. So they are actually twins? Yes, they are my sisters. Oh, okay. okay, we did the same area. Yes. Uh, anything else you can add to this? But, uh, for me to say, you can't compare this election to the general election. If it were a general election, the other sister would not accept to go. Because this is assembly election. So she just said, because the reason why this is trying to generate, because people are saying that you can win with one vote. So they want the other sister also to vote. But because the tension is cool, then she decided to go. But if it could have been general election, it would be different thing. Because others were saying that uh, the machine are defaulting. That's why. Because I don't understand. They have different features. So how can you tell me? Because they are twins. And the machine cannot detect. So assuming we have 10,000 twins in Ghana, it, it tells you that maybe 500 will vote and the other 500 will not vote, which will not order well. I may say, maybe this one is just cool here, but other places, if they are twins, it should not be, well, it's as, this is assembly election, but other place, I don't think they will take it like, fortunately, this is a woman or a female. If they are male, I don't think, or let's assume if it's vice versa, one female, one male, and my sister came and voted, and me, I'm here, you are telling me that, you know, allow me to vote. So, I don't think Different features because we are twins. Machine can reject the other one that one have come already. Well, thank you so much. We hope that this in no way foreshadows what to expect in election 2024. For Joy News, Sweetie Abochi.
And there's more we're learning about the process because in the airport's residential area, uh, still within the Greater Accra region, some voters were reluctant to participate in the elections. My colleague Kenneth JC engaged some of the voters and also the EC's presiding officer within the area. Um, I, I believe the process is, is quite unique and very good because uh, this is the initial uh, stage of the government uh, pro- proceeds. So the assembly election is more important to every community in this country. Yeah. And then, uh, what's your opinion on the indelible ink which has been abolished? Um, that one I can't say much because it is the rule of the UC, the best that they can do for the people and the, the country. Whether the indelible is there is good or it's not there is not good. But that one is, is done by the UC. We are to come here and vote as a Ghanaian. So whatever they have provided, I think we have to abide by it and do the best. What do you think is making young people especially uninterested in voting? <laughs> That's quite difficult. But one thing I can say is that, uh, like, like I initially said, it's good to vote for this particular exercise because uh, every, only, only one development starts from the community. So each and every one should at least show concern by voting to make the community also pick up to meet the national grid. Yes, I voted around seven something to eight. Yeah. So why is that? Uh, I'm the world woman organizer, Roman Rich. What does that mean? World woman organizer, you're supposed to be at the police station, monitor everything, whatever is going on, uh, to see that everything is going on well. All the polling stations that we've gone to, we've seen middle-aged to older people, you know, voting. We are not seeing the young people voting. Why? Some of the old women, they are women organizers. Uh-huh. And the, the first uh, voters, we are supposed to monitor them and bring them along to the polling station to come and vote. Mm. Yeah. So that now there's no ink on your hand when you finish voting. What's your view on that? Uh, I disagree with that. But that's what the EC said. So we have nothing to do, like to come and vote, uh, based on what they have said. So we are on it. What's your disagreement? My disagreement that the election can be rigged through this. Because without the ink, how can uh, you identify? Uh, no, maybe somebody can come twice. So that's why we are here, to monitor everything. Yeah. But they say that their machine is in such a way that nobody can vote twice. If you try voting twice, the machine will catch you. You don't trust the machine? I don't trust it. Because uh, we were here around uh, 6.30. As at that time, even they have, they have not done anything. They set up to around 7 something to 8 before they set up everything. Some people are uh, ready to go to work, but they wanted to vote. So we were here waiting for them. And the voter, uh, voting started around 7 something to 8. So I disagree with them. This, this area is prison 1 and 2, junior high, Roman Ridge 2. Yes, uh, actually... We are expecting 524 to vote, but currently we are having less than 35 who have turned up voting. No. So you are closing at 5 p.m., if I'm correct. And by 5 p.m., looking at the 35 people that have turned out to vote, how many people more do you expect to add up to that number? Okay, by that time, I think we are expecting at least 200 people. At least 200 people. They are not overly ambitious? <laughs> somehow, somehow, somehow. But we are expecting that by midday up to late afternoon, many people will turn up. Looking at uh, the new 
measures that have been put in place, notably the indelible ink which has been taken away. Has there been any complaints from the voters? There has there's not been any complaints from them. Oh, process in India, in fact, I say, and they are and I think so, I didn't so, and change And this is here, I have a tomb, I have a no. I was a nipper, no more, but Macumacu, Macumacu. And the my friend say, I started the Yara. It means that when you're fee, nature say, what to a batch. Yes, they say, what to a bunny, we are young for ink, and you won't say, be a month for be brave, say, and never mind a month for what to a bunny me, and only me and son. Why don't you want to say? Eh, and they say, a bang now, and what can I say? And a wild dream when the women who say, Sir, and Yamano, Ibuha, and the ink in here, and Pippa. Now, what to me, I sang the accord to a baffle for you. Do you want to say, and what you say? One at home now, a verification machine, no, a bit to me, a bois, my face, eh, and a dear, and a Millicent, how many people are expected to vote? How many have voted so far? Okay, we are expecting over 600 candidates here, but as at the moment, over 50 candidates have been here. 50? You mean voters? Uh, okay. Then that's encouraging because here, 25, the other place, 22, and here, 50. And um, tell us about the indelible ink, how are people receiving it. Well, as we started, most of them were confused and asking questions about it, but our presiding officer educated them about it, so I don't think they're having a problem about that. Yeah. Has there been any uh, misunderstanding from any of the uh, voters? No, no. Since morning, we haven't encountered anything. So at the end of the day, judging by the 50 voters that have come, what are your projections? How many people are you expecting? Well, looking at the voters that have come so far, I would say we are expecting over 100 to 150 voters by the end of the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 How's the turnout been so far? Um, it's, it's been okay. It's been smooth. Um, we are expecting um, 700 people, but as of now, we have only um, 22 people who have voted successfully. So we are, we are still expecting um, other people to come and join. Have you encountered any misunderstanding from any of the voters? Oh, not really. I think the only um, issue here is um, most people used to vote here, like almost the whole vicinity, they used to vote here. And then most of them couldn't get the time to check their names in the... the voter register during the exhibition so when they come here it's either they don't vote at this particular polling station so it's our duty to check and then let them go to where they are supposed to vote so for the first time we are no longer using the indelible ink as a form of having voted how are the people taking this uh, it's it's okay with them I think so um, no one has complained and then I think with the system in place now um, it's even safer than using the indelible ink because there is no way you can vote twice. How? Um, Because we have um, a verification device called a BVD so this one it uses your um, your either your index uh, your fingerprint or your facial identification. So once you've been here, um, we check everything, and then we give you the go-ahead to vote. So when you come back again, the system, the device will let us know you've been here already. Yeah. And we'll be getting you uh, more uh, from our reporters across the country, but it's a good time now to also hear from uh, Dr. Sasanti, who is uh, joining us via Zoom right now. He's a political scientist with the uh, University of Ghana. Thank you so much, sir, for spending some time with us. So you've had uh, a wide reaction uh, greeting 
this uh, very reform that the Electoral Commission is putting in place, the easy about, you know, taking out the option of the indelible ink, um, it appears that voters are getting used to it, even before we get to the issue of the low voter tenor. Uh, Dr. Santi, we're, we're having some challenges hearing you. If you could just uh, uh, unmute for us. Yes, can you hear me? L- loud, and, loud and clear, sir. Great, great. Uh, Doc, I was just asking the question earlier on about your initial reaction to this uh, whole indelible ink issue uh, that, you know, the the voter population appeared to be touching on after participating in today's elections. Uh, It appears that, by and large, many of them will get used to it, isn't it? Definitely, when you set any process in motion, uh, people will complain. But as the process continues or progresses, uh, people uh, examine the whole process, and if it's okay, they move with that. Uh, sometimes it's not okay, <clears throat> but they have no choice than to um, accept it as it is. Uh, we're looking at, for instance, that unique story of uh, you know mm-hmm. the twin sisters, <laughs> of course, going to the same polling center, and they seem to have difficulties. One of the uh, differentiating factors could have been the use of the indelible ink. You agree? I honestly, um, I thought that the the absence of indelible ink uh, was going to create a problem uh, because um, sometimes you have identical twins like that. How do you differentiate <clears throat> sometimes to um, other factors uh, can affect uh, that exercise if you are not using the ink. So um, I was wondering what really uh, triggered that type of policy that if you don't use ink, it's good enough. What is it? What we gain by not using ink? Obviously, you would tell me it's cost, but the state is prepared to pay for anything that will make elections what credible and foolproof. So things that will bring doubt, I'm sure that's why we need to shy away from. So uh, I don't know the feasibility studies and all the calculations that went into it. But for me, and where I sit, I believe that we should have used the ink. Mm. And I want us now to look at, uh, you know, the concerns about the voter turnout. But it's, not, it's almost the same, uh, the same old story of, you know, many people not participating in the exercise. We're hopeful, uh, because the exercise hasn't ended yet, that by the close of day today, at least the numbers will, will show up past what we used to experience, um, you know, in previous elections. But, but the trend is still the same. Why are we having this, you know, challenge, perennial problem of having a low voter turnout for the district-level elections? I'm sure this country expects this type of results. We can pretend. <laughs> because, one, we have not made uh, local government elections very attractive. If you see campaign, did you even hear of their campaign messages and the rest of them? Have we, as a state, attached importance to the whole exercise when we had opportunity uh, to make it partisan, partisan by going on the referendum and then discussing what we can do uh, relative to uh, that type of proposal. Mm. We jettison it, and then we are back to square one. In addition to all this, you realize that uh, we have not, as a, as a people, we have not made it a policy to make the local government uh, election very attractive. And one surest way by which we can do that is through uh, the partisan nature that we want to introduce. If we buy into that, uh, it's going to uh, ginger people into uh, taking part effectively and other. And of course, you are going to have the party machinery brought to bear on the situation. So now you, that support, is a no, you, you support the idea of partisanship at the base? Yes, yes I support it 100%. I mean, why do you have partisanship structure at top and uh, at the grassroots you have something different it's dysfunctional it doesn't work well right what you have at the base should be replicated at the top because power emanates from what the grassroots if you look at even people we elect at the national level we elect them from the grassroots not from any national something it's what the constituency so why do you have what a non-partisan uh, system there and at the top you have partisan it's dysfunctional, and it doesn't bode well uh, for our democracy. 
And that is why, through research, people have come out to say that that is the surest way to go. Apart from this, the EC also has its own challenges. Um, there are some places that they are not even put in today. I'm sure you are well aware of that. Yeah. My own district, I, I was ready and on my way to go and uh, cast my ballot. And then on the way, uh, I received a call that, hey, we are not voting at a crop uh, North Municipal Assembly, but we are voting tomorrow. Here you are. <laughs> so I stopped. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the reason, but I'm sure it's perhaps maybe due to logistics and all that. Is it the case that the election management body uh, have not been able to uh, supply the needed materials to all those places? And then uh, that's why we're having this uh, problem. I think uh, this type of exercise, the places that uh, there are difficulties and they are postponing, it tells you that something went amiss and it needs to be fixed. Yeah, so indeed, all uh, these factors uh, put together have culminated in, the, in the, the situation that we find ourselves. And in fact, uh, many would say that this could be dress rehearsal for the Electoral Commission, at least to pick up, you know, on its strengths and weaknesses, reflect and uh, move forward to organize a, a much more improved general elections next year. Uh, if there are some changes or reforms to take place, where do we start off from? One, the reforms should come from the electoral election management body. They should make that, make sure that the, the, the three phases of elections are covered very well. The pre-election phase, where you need to put in all your all, all the resources that the people need, make them ready. And then on the election phase, and on day of elections, people should go to the polling station without um, uh, without going there to meet a situation where there are no electoral materials and electoral, you know, the electoral process is truncated in one way or the other. That should be, you know, thrown away. And then they should be able to what give education very well before the election and all that so that people will know that there is this exercise that is going on in the rest of them beyond electoral commission at this state we should take a definitive position on this are we going for a partisan are we maintaining the the the, the non-partisan nature of our local government election or we want to introduce the partisan nature if we want to maintain the status quo, I'm, I'm afraid this type of trend will continue and we're going to see worse in mm. terms of voter turnout and in terms of performance as people begin to lose interest and all that. But if we ginger the people and we introduce, we bring back the conversation of the partisan nature at the grassroots, I can assure you without fear or contradiction in my mind that you are going to have more people energized to yeah. take part in the district assembly election but well, other than that i'm afraid yeah well the president has attempted that before i'll find out from you shortly if indeed we should uh, you know kick start or restart that conversation in an election year next year uh, and what the president should be considering on that but i, I also want to bring in now uh, from the ashanti region Nanaya Bwachi adam and doc just hold on for us uh, because there's a need for us to learn about what's happening in the region uh, where of course, uh, there are some uh, questions that are being asked the Electoral Commission uh, where the polls are being postponed in those electoral areas. Nanaya Obachi Adam has been monitoring all of that for us and joins us uh, now with more. Um, Nanaya, what can you report and why would the elections be, um, you know, suspended if, if that's not the description of it? Why are the elections being deferred, if I should say? in general it has been peaceful and smooth in the ashanti region um at this moment, we, are, we, we know that some candidates throng the EC office, the EC headquarters in the Ashanti region to demand answers as to why their election is not for voters to come in and cast their vote and also need um, preparation, for some, news preparation for, for some news for these voters. But all of a sudden, um, they were told that the election would not be conducted in these areas, um, Santasi, Inshayaso, Achuman Ponyo, Achuman Wabieja, and also, in fact, the entire Inshayaso constituency would not be part of this electoral process. South Suntreso is also included, and we are also learning that Barikese is not exempted from this whole um, areas that would not be partaking in this electoral process. The process has been um, a bit slow in some of the 
um, districts that we have visited, the voter turnout is not really impressive. That is what we, we, we've picked up from the districts that we have visited um, throughout the day. But we are currently at the Oforico municipality. Um, over here, there are several districts participating in today's district level elections, but the turnout has been um, slow just as other districts that we have visited throughout the day. You can see that the EC officials are here. Um, getting interactive with the voters who will be coming in and then later on lead them to their ballot box to cast their vote. And so I can report for the meantime that the Ashanti region for here, uh, it has been smooth and peaceful. My colleague Emmanuel Brightquig has also been monitoring the situation on ground. He has been to um, some areas and he will be joining me to give us um, a brief analysis on what the situation has been in South Central so specifically and over here at the Furukro municipality where we are learning that about three um, districts over here would not be part of this whole um, electoral process. Ima, what can you tell us? All right, so um, Nana, as um, we reported in the morning that some of these electoral areas will not be partaking in this particular exercise. That is exactly what has happened, and the EC has even um, confirmed that. So in South Suntreso, um, they did not vote. Um, when I went there, an area that is allocated normally for um, voting exercises, it's actually a tree. The, the, the EC officials sit under this tree to do this exercise but when I went there this morning there was nothing of a sort um, at South Central so I then moved on to um, this um, Asia um, district or if I should put it the Asia area where we have some electoral areas around here some pooling stations and um, about four of them um, here and um, we monitored um, throughout in out of the four um, electoral areas only three um, as I went there only three were functioning if I should put it only three of them were functioning when I went to the last the last one actually they had set up the ballot or erected the ballot boxes and um, waiting for the materials um, and as they're voting the ballot boxes the ballot papers and the rest to come so they vote but later on um, we understand that um, a particular and um ballot um, sheet wasn't available that's for the unit committee and that's why um, they didn't actually cast their ballot so and um, the concerns from the even the electorates in this area were that um, have they been disenfranchised or what, what has really um, happened so um, they are hoping well we don't know for them whether they are going to partake in what is to come on Thursday but for them they are hoping that um, they will be asked to come back and then cast um, their ballots and then vote um, for um, a, a, their preferred candidate. One interesting bit um, that happened also was that whilst we were in office um, this afternoon, we had some electorates from the Bomsu area um, besiege um, the office. Um, they tell us that they don't understand why the EC would not announce this earlier that some of these electoral areas will not be um, partaking in the ex exercise and then they wasted so much time at these polling stations hoping that um, they will get um, or they will get their chance to cast their ballots but unfortunately that didn't happen so they are raising the question on the fact that will the EC or the electoral commission be able to conduct the general elections given um, what, what has happened today that some of these polling stations are not um, conducting or they, they are not um, having their electoral or voting exercise today. So they are casting some bits of doubt on whether the EC will be um, able to um, conduct the general elections that's in 2024 peacefully. So they are just hoping that the EC would um, make some amends and then hopefully in 2024 they would be able to cast their ballot peacefully. So that's what is currently happening in some of these areas. All right, so that is for South Centreso and your Foruko municipality. Well, um, given the circumstances, the voters are questioning the EC's credibility in conducting the 2024 general elections. But then we have to engage the EC officials here and find out from them how the um, elections has been so far. It started at exactly 7 a.m. How has the turnout been and also have they faced any challenges um, whatsoever? So let me get interactive with some of them and then find out from them. Uh, boss, you've been here since 7 a.m. when the election started. How has the process been? Um, okay. When we came hello. the people where um, I'm interested in this thing, so I have to with me. We are um, 
60-70. Yeah, we are having around 60-70 um, electorates coming to partake in the elections. All right, thank you so much. And so there are over 500 um, voters expected to cast their vote over here. But then, at the moment, um, close to 70 electorates have participated and so far in the Euphorico municipality. But I'm to find out from them. All the beauty of uh, technology there. Apologies for uh, the challenges we are experiencing. We'll definitely be uh, taking you back to the Ashanti region uh, where Danael Bachiadom is interacting with some of uh, the election officials and also those participating in the exercise today. I want to bring back uh, Dr. Kwame Asante who's been uh, helping us through the discussion. Uh, and Doc, we're still you know, getting the same report about non-participation in this exercise. The reason for which you're proposing uh, that, of course, we revisit the issue of participation, political particip participation, uh, at the base. Um, the, the president attempted once, failed on that exercise. We're moving into a general um, election year. The concern about whether or not it's feasible to reactivate you know, the constitutional reforms, possibly for a referendum ahead of the main election. Uh, is, is that you know, something feasible for the president? Um, yeah. If the president wants to take up that conversation again, fine. Uh, but entering next year, um, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a bit difficult because they will be preoccupied with campaign and all that. Mm. So if you bring this conversation in, you are going to, you know, divide attention and all that. Maybe this conversation uh, will take it up after elections. Uh, so that we'll have more time to deliberate on it and then straight away after general election, when we are done, <clears throat> everything is said and done, then we can go into execution and then uh, we vote and uh, using uh, the, the, the the partisan nature of mm. the whole process. Mm. Uh, uh, but fact, for now, already, I think... Uh, yeah, and in fact, we're already seeing some uh, political actors, uh, you know, make partisan comments, uh, if you want to put it that way, uh, or a partisan spin on this, uh, with the former president, uh, John Mahama, already voting up north and pointing out today that his administration, he voted into power, will try and transform and, of course... Um, make decentralization pivotal uh, in his next administration if he's giving the opportunity to uh, run uh, the presidency again. Uh, the point about political will and how that is crucial in, in you know, the decentralization agenda, do you feel that the, the political parties, those at the central level, are very much committed to, to what's happening down there? Uh, for the MPP, uh, to be fair with them, uh, they had that political will. Uh, to bring the the bringing of the conversation uh, was in itself uh, an evidence of political um, will uh, in that regard. Yeah. But we as a society threw it away. Yeah. Uh, and since then, I know we have not uh, mastered the quarry to bring it back. Of course, you cannot blame the government for having uh, not been able to or bring the conversation back uh, to the public for discussion. No, because it brought out the opportunity and then we threw it away. But generally speaking, I think that all the parties believe in the fact that these real assembly elections must be partisan. I think so by and large. So if we, we want to bring the conversation up, I think this time around we will get more support. And if we strengthen the advocacy and education on that matter, we will get a lot of people to understand why that conversation is being held, and then uh, their contribution when we welcome them and all that. Mm. It will shift the frontiers of the conversation and it will make uh, uh, decision-taking easier. Right. Uh, and the last point, uh, controversial one, as though it may be, uh, but the, the, the issue of considering payment to members of the local assemblies. They've compared themselves to MPs, for instance, um, agents of development, where the MPs um, have some access to um, the development fund in the community, except to say that they, as the assemblymen, those who are closer to the base, do not have any funding. Is it time to begin, you know, payments of salaries to 
assembly members or perhaps consider uh, some form of funding one way or the other to them? Whatever it is, we need to inject money into the work that they do there. Remember, democracy without money or finance is empty. Uh, you need resources to be able to push the democratic agenda forward. Mm. Uh, what is the point of people getting skilled people who work at the grassroots level and receiving nothing or pittance? Amen. It doesn't bode well for anybody or any meaningful system such as what we have here. If we want to see, be serious about that, we need to look at how we can fund that, how we can you know, strengthen that financial so that it will attract the right caliber of people there. It's uh, the lack of funding is also the cause of why uh, people don't get attracted toward the local assembly elections and all that. And I'm talking about quality people, right? Once we introduce some level of funding and all that, you are likely to have others also go in there. And then who are people who are already there, mm. they also get energized to be able to do the work and all that. For well, now, they are doing the work as if it's a voluntary work and all that. But you cannot blame them because they end next to nothing. Well, we'll see what happens in the coming days. Dr. Kwame Asante, thank you uh, for spending some time uh, with us here on the polls. And as we already know, the Electoral Commission has suspended uh, voting in some parts of the uh, Eastern and Ashanti region with the Electoral Commission issuing a statement uh, on that very uh, situation and pointing out that the Commission wishes to inform the general public that due to the um, the number of technical challenges, the district-level elections in some of the areas, especially in the Ashanti and Eastern regions, have been rescheduled. That will be happening on Thursday, the 21st of December, 2023. Quote, we apologize for any inconvenience caused residents of the electoral areas, and we assure residents of the affected areas that the district-level elections will be held on Thursday once again, the 21st of December, 20. 23 unquote. So that's the statement coming through from the Commission. And Asabit is at Techiman South electoral area in the Bono East region found this report. So we are here at the Techiman Islamic you know, primary polling center where election is already on uh, here in the Techiman South uh, constituency of the Bono East region. Voting started at 7. However, school is in session and uh, school authorities are unhappy the conduct of the exercise during school hours, particularly uh, considering the fact that school is in session and the school is also writing exams. They say the exercise is conflicting with academic activities. They've been speaking with school authorities and this is, you know, what we've been saying in relation to this particular development. Currently, we are having a, we are in an exam week and at the same time we are having an exam. And like you can see, uh, exams and at the same time conducting a conduction of an election. And the queue doesn't match. Uh, in fact, it is causing some, some sort of inconvenience among the teachers, the children. And even particularly looking at, they are using our premises, our tables and chairs. So right now, some of the children has to be, some of the, we have to send some of the children out for the few decks around to cater for a few ones who can take the exam, as I'm speaking now. So after they are finished, then the rest also come and take. So it doesn't work well for, I mean, writing an exam and conducting an election at the same time. These head teachers have a suggestion. They wish next time elections are conducted, uh, should be done, uh, you know, during the weekends or on holidays, uh, or possibly uh, government should factor giving set schools where elections are conducted uh, some special holidays so that uh, the exercise wouldn't be conflicting with academic activities. In future, I wish the Electoral Commission could provide their own means of or uh, their own furniture to help us to con have the election. And uh, at the same time, children also can have access to their classroom, their tables, and their chairs, likewise the teachers. Or they should have holiday for the school, the center, where, where the school is, so that they will have some sort of holiday so that they can conduct the system and conduct it together. We've also been engaging some uh, electoral officers and they, they share with us their frustrations. Uh, they, they, they say even furniture for them to sit on because school is already in session is a difficult uh, thing. So uh, next time they are appealing to authorities to factor this uh, to keep up, you know, um, turnout because they say enough 
you know, um, importance has not been attached to this particular, uh, you know, exercise compared to national or general uh, elections. I'm saying that uh, today is a major national exercise, and it has coincided with examinations. Students are writing their exam today, so I'm thinking that today should have been declared a public holiday so that the exercise can be very successful. Now we don't even have chairs; they have taken it from us that they still want to use it to write the exams. We are standing conducting this exercise, and if it had been a major uh, election like parliamentary and presidential, it would be so. So, politicians should give equal importance to this exercise as they give to the presidential and parliamentary election, so that the citizen will see that this exercise thing is important. The situation isn't any different here at the Baptist primary and junior high school polling centers where uh, the, the school is equally writing its exams and the exercise is ongoing. Headmistress of the school uh, say um, the situation is adversely affecting you know, uh, teaching and learning. We are writing our last paper today. But due to the voting exercise, it has affected us in so many ways. They've taken all our chairs the children have no tables and chairs to sit on to write the exams. And we have a lot of people here, and the children cannot concentrate in writing the paper. So I wish that next time they should see to it that the exercise doesn't conflict with school activity. So even though turnout has been extremely low in most of the polling centers we visited, you know, quite, it is quite too early to suggest that uh, the situation will be same throughout uh, the process. We are hoping that by the close of the polls, we will have more persons turning out to cast their ballots. From the Islamic Primary Polling Center here in the Tachiman South constituency, my name is Anas Sabit, reporting for Joy News. And out south in the Volta region, Ivy Setoji is now uh, joining us uh, for more updates uh, on this. Ivy, what can you report? I view we're having difficulties hearing you. Well, if you can hear me, the turnout, uh, turnout today has been uh, very, very, very low uh, in most of the places. Today, I have been in the OT region. Uh, I was in Ketakrati earlier. Uh, I am now crossing the river to uh, Dambai to monitor that area as well. Uh, but... Uh, the turnout has been low, as I said, and people are hoping that uh, from now to the time it's over, uh, people coming from their workplaces, farms, and markets will be able to go and vote. Uh, honestly, uh, residents say they don't see the need to vote for assembly members, uh, uh, you know, comparing it with the general election. So uh, I think there is uh, that uh, need for. Uh, much public uh, education on the assembly elections. Uh, we spoke to the OT regional minister, uh, Dr. Joshua Makubu, who said that uh, much attention should be given to the assembly elections so that people will know that they are even uh, much more needed than any other things. And also, uh, he also advocated for uh, persons right. with disability as well as women uh, to be voted for. So, well, we are, I'm going to Dambai right now to see what exactly is going on at that place. But as I said earlier, uh, the turnout for this time around has been very low. Okay, uh, I've said so. You're joining us from the Volta region. Uh, we head to the northern region. Martina Bugri is there. Martina? Uh, yeah, so for the northern region, um, in the Nanumba South District, there have been some challenges. Um, about six polling centers receive materials short than the required people who are supposed to vote in these areas. But um, my text with the EC director in the region, he tells me that what they have, I told the officers there is if you um, people come in excess than what you have received, you move to areas where and they have less people who are coming, so you can bring those materials to your center so that I, those who are there can vote. But he also says that so far nobody has actually called in to say we need extra uh, ballot for the voting. 
Um, we've also recorded some areas where we have um, machine issues, like the Garizawo um, area. And um, since morning, few people have been able to vote, and they come to be verified becomes a problem. Around Lamachegu, I also experienced some like that. People who spoke to me said they have also had challenges um, with verified. But largely, yes, it's been peaceful in the region here, except the low voter turnout that has been recorded since morning. We can say largely it's been good so far. And definitely, uh, we'll be getting back to Martina for uh, the latest on the district level elections. You're watching the policy on the Joint News Channel. When we get back, we'll also tell you what's been happening in court with regard the new force uh, and its spokesperson. We'll be back. So true. Wow, it has a working surface like it. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I can see S I N mm -hmm. T E X syntax. That is so true, my daughter. When it falls down, it goes That's not true. But why? Why? <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Every day, people have money emergencies. Wow. I need my school fees. Emergency. Mommy, chop money. money. Emergency. 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 Catch it. I'm your rent. Emergency. Now, there's a new emergency number in town. More money, more money, Charlie, and enjoyment. At the top five, we got Dial star 770 hash for all your money emergencies. Dial star 770 hash for money emergencies and get easy and quick access to your money, loans, and other banking needs. Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. The festival is coming. What is going on between you and Pamela? Roverman Productions, in partnership with Joy FM and the National Theatre, presents the Roverman Festival of Plays. The festival starts on 23rd December with four girls, the spare. 24th December, husband material, seven yards. 25th December, I like what you like. New Year's Day, naked in bed. 2nd January, unhappy wives, confused husbands. 6th January, just the tip. 7th January, naked in bed. 8th January, for girls, the spell. Venue, National Theatre. For tickets, Dow Star 365 Star 535 Hash. WhatsApp. 050-554-6010 or visit our regular outlet. Rate 200 Ghana CDs per play and 900 CDs for 6 plays. Time 4 and 8 p.m. each day. Sponsors Gino Tomato Mix, GCB Bank and Ebony Con. Roverman Productions. Be the difference. Yeah. person of the new force, Shalima Abusi, has been rearrested by the Ghana Immigration Service after charges preferred against her were dropped by the state in court today. Shalima Abusi, a Belgian uh, national who was being held for obtaining a student permit, has been arraigned at the Kanesha District Court. Uh, state prosecutors led by the Ghana Immigration on Tuesday dropped the charges against her, but she was shortly rearrested and whisked away 
I missed the approaches from her lawyers and, uh, of course, our legal affairs correspondent, Richard Kojinyako, was there. So we are here at the precinct of the Kaneshi District Court where earlier in the courts, the prosecution said they had dropped the charges uh, preferred against the spokesperson for the new force, Shalima Abuisi. Just as they stepped down, the state prosecutors, the Ghana Immigration Service, re-arrested Shalima Abuisi, and the lawyers of the lady would not have any of that. They say that it is an affront to human rights, and so they have filed several actions at the Human Rights Court, and they will compel the Ghana Immigration Service prosecutors, in this case, to appear before the court, because this action is really in an arbitrary manner, and they will do everything possible to protect the human rights, the fundamental human rights, of Shalima Abuisi, who has just been waked away in their vehicle. Francis Xavier Sosu, who is lawyer for Shalima Abuisi, is distraught, is unhappy with the development. Behavior is this. You came to the court and said that you have asked that the court, the charges against the person be dropped. The charges are dropped, the person is discharged. And then you branded the person as if it's a common criminal here. If you really want the person in your office, from here we'll come to the office. Last week when the court said we should be there three times, we were there every single day. So if you knew you were going to do this, what kind of disgrace is this? What kind of international disgrace is this? I mean, are we living in a democracy or we are living in a jungle? Are we living in a democracy or we are living in a jungle? So she Honestly, be- I'm, I'm sincerely disappointed. Because you, the immigration officers, came here and said that her permit has been revoked. If you have revoked a permit, where is the evidence of the revocation? You should have brought it to the court and show it to everybody. Then we would then say that, okay, you have revoked a permit, so you can take it. You didn't do that. Then you branded the person as if he's a common criminal and sent her away like that. Why do you behave this way? Why do you behave this way? That is complete assault. It was completely uncalled for. It's completely uncalled for. And I think that, look, we must, we must really watch it. Where we are going, I think that we are sending the wrong signal to the international community. After all, there are Ghanaians who are also in other countries, right? If your citizen is, is, is treated this way in another country, will you be happy? Do you know the number of Ghanaians who are abroad? Around, do you know the number of Ghanaians in Belgium? If your citizens are treated this way, will you be happy? Well, I'll leave so, it. So, so, so what, what, what do you do now? Well, we have filed a number of actions. As we speak to you now, we have filed an action in the, in the Human Rights Court against them for all other processes they may want to take for purposes of either trying to remove her from the country or not. I'm hoping that by the close of the day or by afternoon, they will all be served with those actions. And they will appear in court to come and answer for what they are doing. Because we knew that there's the likelihood that they'll be behaving in the manner they are behaving this way. And this is so arbitrary. This should not be tolerated in any democracy. So um, here, you see the parents of uh, Shalima Abuisi, um, very distraught. They are unhappy with the development. And so um, they are moving in a car. They are heading straight to the Ghana Immigration Service, where their daughter uh, has just been picked up by the Ghana Immigration Service. It's quite a scene here and the lawyers for Shalima Abuisi are very very angry they can't believe what just happened they say that the state prosecutors are acting in an arbitrary manner and they have filed a number of actions some at the human rights court and then they will make the prosecution i mean appear before court because they say that this action that has been taken is quite uncalled for reporting for joy news from the kaneshi district court my name is richard kwejonya for joy news reporting for joy news from the kaneshi district court my name is richard kwejonya for joy news Cast these things like the rules of origin. We'll hold now for um, Abusi, as the name is, uh, Shalima Abusi. Uh, let's talk about the next step. What's likely to happen now that the Ghana Immigration Service uh, has uh, taken custody? Uh, investigations, they found that that was not so. And it was based on that in court today, uh, they announced to the judge that, in fact, they have dropped the charges. 
And then just as she stepped down, as we saw in our shots, that she was rearrested. And then she was told there and then that her permit to stay in Ghana has been revoked. Mm. So, so, so that's where the lawyers have a challenge. Exactly. You said that, well, they, they, they should have come to the courts with the revocation letter. But when I spoke with immigration um, officials, they indicated that also they were simply rearresting her, take her to their premises, and then all the other processes will follow. And so that is what we do know. So um, that is what we can say now about the next line of action. But she is due to be repatriated later tonight. I understand the time would be about 10 p.m. where okay, she'll go back. The, the question as to uh, what happened um, with, with this very case that uh, Francis Xavier Sosu, the lawyer for Shalima, are in court for, because she, uh, he's announcing that there's a human rights court that will now hear a new application is bringing before the court. What, what exactly is happening there? Well, so um, Xavier Sosu's point is that um, she is also a human being, like the constitution enjoins all Ghanaians. She also falls under the fundamental human rights of this country under Article um, Chapter 5 of the 1992 Constitution. And so she feels that she is not being dealt properly. Her human rights have been violated. And based on that, she uh, he has filed certain processes at the Human Rights Court in Accra to for the, the court to invite these people for the, the, the process to continue. And I see that uh, we didn't get any opportunity of hearing from the parents. But they are obviously concerned about what's happening. Yes, so, so, so it was really concerning for the parent. In fact, uh, this was the second time I saw the parent. The last time was last week when they came. I think they, they, they were, but this time they were completely broken. Mm -hmm. When her freedom um, was granted uh, by the dropping of the charges, they felt that the, at long last their daughter was free, only for the daughter to be rearrested. And so it was shocking to them. At them. So you saw some of them, um, the parent, the, the mother, most especially, shedding tears when the vehicle was whisking the daughter away. Oh, I see. Uh, so the point now about, uh, you know, confirming whether or not Shalima belongs to the new force, has that been settled? And what's the future of the political movement, if it is one, uh, now that she's, she's no longer? Well, so um, the activities of the new force is uh, somewhat shrouded in secrecy. Uh, one does not even know who are really behind this force, but in, in, some, in recent past, uh, we've seen Shalima herself during the water disaster. Um, she was distributing some relief items, engaging other people, doing some philanthropic work, right. and all of that. Last week, you, you had some of the people from Circle indicating that they know her, they've been staying no, with her. They've been reading a lot about her in the, in the e newspapers. E exactly. But for the third force in general, people are now nosing around to know who exactly they are, yeah. who are behind this force. And I remember that in court, um, the prosecution indicated that the state was interested in who she was working for, right. whose interest was she serving. And so that is one thing. But what I've gleaned from her is that she is a model. She came to Ghana um, through um, some friends. And I think certain things did not go right. And so she fell in the hands of some agency. And then because she's a model, uh, the agency contracted this new force and then she signed some documents. And that is why you saw her pictures on their billboards and all of that. So it's, it's just like some contract. So she's now becoming the beauty queen for the new force. Exactly. You know, people, mm -hmm. likes, what, people like what is beautiful. I and see. I, I'm sure that when you see the billboards... You are oh. inclined to just stay there Amazing. and observe her. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming, honestly, <laughs> you know, because that she's been all over the place uh, speaking on behalf of the group. Exactly. But, um, but, but the now really, it's standing out that she might have been a model just for the third force. Not but Is the third force a, a fashion... Fashion no, no. Uh, she, she in particular, what she does okay. is modeling. All oh, right. Um, but she was contracted by the third force... To be a model, to... No, a spokesperson. So, so you take pictures as well? No, 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 okay. no, no, no right. not really. Let me just get that really clear. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Not really pictures, okay. but because she speaks for them, mm -hmm. no one knows anything about the third force apart from Shalima Abuisi. Mm -hmm. And so she was the, the face of that. And, you know, political uh, some of the political parties, they do start like that. Mm -hmm. They do start, and, and then very soon controversies okay. will arise. Yeah. Exactly. And so that but I've, how no, I've no, honestly, I've never seen a political movement start with beauty queens. Yes, you yes, seen one in Ghana. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why it's an interesting story, I'm telling you. Um, because we've seen a, you know, complain about the billboards being 
put down in yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that is also concerning for the lawyers I, I spoke with as well. But in court, there was nothing political. Mm. No political discussion or about the political party was tied. Right. With the exception of the Immigration Act mm. that has been breached by Shalima herself because she didn't have the requisite permit to engage in the activity yes. she was engaged in, and that is why they went after her. Unfortunately, uh, she might be going home. She is going home, as yes. we've confirmed yes. uh, now. Uh, Richard, thank you for giving us uh, those updates, uh, but it is confirmed now uh, that uh, Shalima Abusi will be leaving the country. That, that's if anything changes, right? Exactly. Something could change. Yeah, yeah, something, something, because I hear that there is even um, a press conference uh, coming up, we do not know oh, the, the really? time by the Ghana Immigration Service. Okay. So we are, we, are, we are looking forward to that press conference mm. and what, what the fallout will be. A busy day it will be and we'll be waiting to see uh, if uh, this Belgian national will be deported as the Ghana Immigration Service is now revoking the uh, residence uh, permit of uh, Shalima Abusi, who's now the known face uh, for this new force, a political movement uh, yet to be uncovered in terms of who the leadership uh, are, but we'll definitely be watching the space. Richard, thank you uh, for updating uh, us. We take you now to Parliament because uh, MP for Ningo Pram Pram and also lead sponsor of the controversial anti-LGBT bill, Sam George, wants Parliament to head to the Supreme Court to ask for some interpretation on Article 108 of the Constitution. President Akufado told Parliament his refusal to sign some of the private members' bill uh, in the House, uh, which the House had already passed, was because they breached the set section of the Constitution. But Sam George, whose anti-gay bill could face a similar challenge, wants Parliament to just uh, take a pursuit at the apex uh, court to settle the matter. The resolution to this matter is for all of us to go to the Supreme Court. Parliament must go to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation of uh, Article 108 and let the judges distinct it for us. Is it the position of the law? Is it the intentment of the framers of the 1992 Constitution that Parliament cannot on its own pass any legislation? And then let's know that Parliament we have here is a rubber stamp Parliament. It cannot pass legislation. But let's go to... It's not about suing President Akufuado. It's about getting a distinction of what the law really is. And that will guide all of us going forward. Country Affairs Correspondent Kuko Santi is joining me with more. Um, you know, this is a rather interesting turn of events, uh, knowing some George uh, for his strong conviction about this anti-gay bill and the fact that he's now um, sort of seeking refuge, if we have to call it that way, in court. Why so? Kweku, we can't hear a word from you. Uh, Santi, uh, there, well, we seem to, to be having a challenge. Uh, Kweku, I'm unable to hear you. Yeah, the worst of George is to get to the point where the Supreme Court pronounces on Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution. The, the arrival meanings that have been put on those terms in the Constitution. There are the likes of President Kufuad who believe that by Article 108, no one, no private member can introduce a bill to Parliament. That imposes a charge on the consolidated fund. That is the president and others who hold that school of thought, that view. There are those that, like some judge in parliament who believe that the one, what 108 says is that in the opinion of the person presiding, so once the speaker of parliament makes a determination that this does not need to be considered because it does not impose a charge on the consolidated fund, then parliament should proceed and deal with this. And so some judge believes that if you go to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will pronounce on this, and then finally, there will be some conclusion on this because he believes the president has completely aired. Okay. Kuku uh, Asante, uh, there, uh, given us, uh, you know, some uh, more uh, explanation to what's happening, we'll definitely be watching the space. Thank you, Kuku, uh, for joining us. Uh, in part three uh, of our latest hotline documentary titled A Nation That Bergs, we tell you the story of how Ghana is now being tagged globally uh, for being a begging nation, begging from Euroborn uh, darling, being the darling boy of the Eurobond to, you know, a debt relief seeker uh, from the IMF. That's the story uh, of the country, as we call it, in our latest, the nation that begs. In 2022, 
Ghana faced economic challenges as emerging markets experienced soaring coupon rates for bonds, rendering them exorbitant. Consequently, only three countries, Nigeria, South Africa, and Angola, managed to issue eurobonds in the first half of the year. Other nations, including Kenya and Ghana, were priced out of the international capital markets due to unsustainable interest rates. But when we started getting the downgrades and others, that we better fix it because the domestic market was just too shallow. It was quite clear that we're in too deep and we're in above our heads. And so once the rating downgrade came, that sealed our fate. We could no longer go back to the international capital markets to borrow, at least not on the European market, until we address issues of debt sustainability. You are mindful about the, the cost of assessing capital from the markets. Okay, and especially when your, your rating has gone down the way it is, we are almost in a junk territory, right? So one basic understanding of the market is that when you come onto the market unattractive, you'll be punished. For Ghana, the burden of debt servicing obligations limited to interest payments only was projected to reach approximately $5 billion at both domestic and external levels in 2023. Unlike its 16th enrollment in 2015, Ghana's unsustainable debt position was certainly a huge obstacle in obtaining an IMF deal. This meant a lot of conditions had to be met. The IMF's message to Ghana was very simple. Restructure your debt or no bailout package. I also want to assure all Ghanaians that no individual or institutional investor, including pension funds, government treasury bills or instruments will lose their money as a result of our ongoing IMF negotiations. There will be no haircuts. So I urge all of you to ignore the false rumors. Instantly, the market knew the president wasn't speaking the truth. You see that right after the president made a statement, the reactions were more or less to reject the statements. And therefore, uh, uh, my expectation is that any investor who probably took a decision on the back of that wasn't an investor, was probably a little doctor. And of course, uh, Isaac Kofiichi, uh, who's uh, behind that work, is joining us. Uh, in studio now uh, on what to expect at 5.30 p.m. when uh, all of that airs. And Isaac, the point about why we're consistent on a nation that begs, it's, it's almost descriptive of the um, situation that our economy is facing now. Absolutely. So uh, this is a three-part series. We brought you the first part called The Genesis, uh, how Ghana became, you know, and got on bridal borrowing assets behavior and then all of a sudden realized that our debt levels are unsustainable. Then we had the, the, the second part, which was for, from um, hero to zero. And the third part is, um, you know, a trailblazer in global yeah. begging. Mm -hmm. A trailblazer in global begging because we are focusing on the eurobond market, right. where substantial amounts of our external debt is coming from. We owe the eurobond market about $14 billion. That currently we are asking these commercial creditors to take haircuts of up to 40% in terms of the principal and then also up to 5% right. in terms of the interest. So this evening at 5.30, we are tracking how government or how Ghana made its debut in the Eurobond market in right. 2007 when um, late former finance minister Kojo Redu left to London, came back with $750 million mm -hmm. and several firsts. We became the first sub-Saharan African country to issue a 0% coupon tranche. And then also we went in between 2013 and 2016, Seth Tekbe was there. And then also the current government under, um, you know, the watch of the finance minister, Ken Oferreta, where we borrowed close to $11 billion. So we are tracking all of this umbrella borrowing, mm -hmm. and we are telling you how Ghana was hailed yeah. as the darling boy in the Eurobond market. And all of a sudden, we've been thrown out of that market mm -hmm. because we were in and in too deep, according to... You know, Bright Simmons, mm -hmm. and you can't be in the capital market 
if you don't have a mechanism for repayment. Uh, and what, uh, you, know, you know, bringing up uh, the, the importance once more of this uh, conversation is because of where we are now, mm -hmm. failed timelines um, for even the IMF Absolutely. second tranche. Yeah, so if you look at it, we've, we've actually had to restructure our, uh, you know, meetings with the executive yeah. board for about at least, I think there's a third time or so, fourth time. And this is all because we've not been able to get the necessary financing assurance to be able to trigger the release of the, the second tranche of the IMF money, which is $600 million. We were in this with Zambia. They are facing the same problems. But countries that are not doing restructuring, like our neighbors, Ivory Coast, they got their first review around the same time we also had our staff first mm -hmm. review, and they've been able to go ahead to withdraw their second tranche. We have not been able to do it because... The condition that we need to meet, the financing assurance yeah. to trigger that 600 million, we've not been able to meet it. We understand there's a problem at both the commercial side uh, in terms of the euro bond side and then also the bilateral. Mind you that the euro bonds that we are talking about, the first people who bought these euro bonds are not the current holders or the, ori the original holders have actually offloaded the bonds. I see. And you find these bonds in the hands of people or investors who are willing to take the risk. So you are asking these people to take a haircut of 40%. They are willing to hold on to the bonds the longest they, that they can because they know the more they hold on to the bonds, the more they are able to get monies from you. And so we ask another very simple question. Do we really have a game plan in this whole debt restructuring or we just want assurances for us to get the IMF monies released? Okay. Um, that's not one question yeah. that we probably have to ask ourselves in this External debt restructuring. Kofi, thank you. 5.30 p.m. on the Joy News channel. Uh, you have more details coming your way. Suspend the lithium lease agreement. That is the appeal of the Domahini Osaji for Osaji Ajaman Bedu the second, uh, and uh, the Bono Regional House of Chiefs uh, urging the government of Ghana to pay heed to the um, you know, experts and influential organizations uh, on this mining deal that Ghana holds 13% shares. Speaking at the end of year review meeting, the chief also announced the decision of some chiefs to cut ties uh, with the Brekum Traditional Council after what he describes as unfair treatment during the funeral of the late Brekum chief. Pressure Semivo has the rest of the story. In his remarks at the 2023 end of year review meeting of the Puno Regional House of Chiefs, the president of the house, Osajifo Seadir Yajman Bedu II, commended the government for the progress of the Sunyani Airport and the upgrade of the regional hospital to a teaching hospital, but called for the needed support for their growth. He expressed concern about the deplorable roads in the region and appealed for speedy action to fix them. Domaheni also voiced the concern of the House about how national security operatives aided one faction against another to install a chief at Sampa, a situation that has allegedly created confusion and fear in the area. He, however, announced the decision of some chiefs to cut ties with the Brekum Traditional Council after what he described as unfairly restricting them from attending the funeral of the late Brekum chief, Nana Mankunadie Wo, a member of the house until his death. I am because
He appealed to the government to heed to calls of experts and civil society groups to suspend the lithium lease agreement with Lithium Atlantic over the contract terms. Because agreement but 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 Bono Regional Minister Justin Aosu Banahini assured the chiefs of more collaboration that will inure to the benefit of the region. Precious Semevo Joy News, Sunyai. And for the past uh, three weeks, anxiety has gripped uh, commuters and pedestrians. Navigating the East Legon uh, Underbridge Road, the source of their concern is the damaged height limit pole that has uh, dislodged from its initial placement, now posing a threat on that main stretch. Faced with a risky situation, drivers find themselves having to navigate cautiously around the obstruction to prevent possible collisions. Kwesi Adai Kwating, I beg your pardon, has compiled this report. This is East Legon Underbridge, a bustling access linking East Legon, Spinters and nearby communities. Drivers crossing this area are compelled to employ inventive maneuvers to avoid colliding with the dangerous height limit indicator pole that has shifted from its original position, posing a potential hazard to unsuspecting motorists and pedestrians. An anonymous vendor revealed to us that the height limit indicator pole was reportedly damaged weeks ago by a towing vehicle. It has happened about three weeks ago, and up to date, nobody comes to check to, I mean, even either to work it out or nobody comes, actually, nobody comes. It was a, a tow car that came to hit it, and then it goes like this. Some motorists who spoke to us shared their concerns about the unstable nature of the pole. They fear that it's only a matter of time before the weakened structure gives way, potentially leading to an incident if no action is taken. We are afraid it's very dangerous because it's broken and it needs to be fixed. Because the cars are passing under it. You don't know what may happen. A air can blow and then it can fall on any car and it can cause dangerous accident again. So the authorities have to come in and check it for us because it's very dangerous to us. It is really posing danger to the uh, traffic and to passengers around this area. It's very dangerous to us. So please, could you please take the immediate action for us to be safe? Safety is better. As a citizen of Ghana, we have been in the country for years. There are certain things which we need to be corrected. So these are one of the things. Obviously, it's dangerous. Obviously. So, I mean, those in charge should come and look at it and fix it as, as, as quickly as possible. Because the concern is if the other side also gets in, it will cause serious problems for commuters. Uh, this, uh, here is the main road. And uh, we can't allow this, this uh, pier to be on the road. How? Because there's the mountain is there. So they have to go there and then mount it at the right, the right place. So I don't know. Ghana leaders, I don't know. Kwesi Adai Kwarten's report read to you. And it's been a year since Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Abamia inaugurated the 56.4 kilometer, uh, 45 million US dollar Sino Hydro Corporation project. But the project has uh, shown its second uh, defect uh, with uh, portions of the stretch, especially uh, the Papasi Junction in KGB being a threat to users. Commuters want that portion fixed to avert any casualties. Correspondent Peter Seno has more. Just 
about a year ago, similar developments popped up at Kokrantumi, also on the stretch. It got resolved with pavement blocks after joiners reported on it. This is Papasi Junction. The asphalted road inaugurated on the 8th of September 2022 has shown its second ugly spot. Here, you see a protruding asphalted road giving way to forces beneath it. Drivers are compelled to move to the shoulders of the road upon reaching this spot. This means there is no walkway for pedestrians anytime there is this coincidental meeting. First time road users have had to scratch the bellies of their vehicles on it. This has not resulted in any major accident yet, but it's a potential accident trigger even as authorities try to reduce the carnage on the roads. Residents and drivers argue this could be as a result of poor job done on this area as the previous construction had concrete blocks laid to ensure the road is safe for its users. They have been sharing their views on this development and the quality of work done. As you can see, the cars are suffering a lot because you can see some load over there. A car will just come, cannot cross, and they will decide to reduce the load before uh, the car will move and they will put it back. So it's a worry. It's a worry. And this road is not even up to two years. And these things are happening. So we are pleading with the government to see to it that the contractor will come back on the site to fix it. And the contractor should come back and repair it again. And the contractor should come back and do it for us again. Otherwise, the last one will be very short, uh, which will be um, a problem for the government. Oh, yes. It's as a result of a shoddy work being done here. Because uh, this road was constructed before, I could say during uh, President Kufo's time. And uh, this place was constructed with tags nicely, and nothing happened here. But this time around, I think it's a, as a result of a shoddy work being done. Here. The 56.4 kilometer, 45 million US dollar project is just a year old after its inauguration. Peter Sanu for Joy News. And thanks for staying with us here on The Pulse. We'll be right back. Before Oku, the god of iron, I stand on Oku. My popular demand. You force words from me again? You bet, Sarah! The biggest play in the history of African theater is back. Oh, dear oh, dear um, the girls are not to play. Eh? We sent you all the way to Ilefe eh? to bring us greetings from Ifa. All right, we'll give the party. Thank you. Monday 18th, Tuesday 19th, and Wednesday 20th December at the National Theatre at 7 p.m. each night. Yes, for three nights only. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see Ola Rotimi's classic tale of fate. The gods are not to blame for the last time in 2023 at the National Theatre. Tickets are selling now for only 150 CDs at www.imageboroughgh.com or dial star 711 star 11 star 25 hash. Supported by our media partners and proudly brought to you by Image Bureau in partnership with April Communications and the National Theatre. Afiaso! Afiaso! It's Christmas at the Evergreen Rattray Park with your superstation, Love 99.5 FM. Where are my bubbly little kids? It's the Love FM Christmas Kids Party! It's party and fun time for all the kids as we enjoy and make merry this Christmas. So parents, come with all the kids and let's have fun! 
Where school is good in these activities? Dancing, singing, choreography, picnic, horse race, lime and spoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Register your school or Sunday school by calling 0245-594425. Cecia. Santa Claus alongside Mickey Mouse will be there with loads of gifts. Remember, there will be bouncy castles, electric train, chuku chaka chuku chaka trampoline, horse race, a stationary aeroplane, TV games, and many more to play with. Face painting too dead a corner there somewhere. Come, let's have absolute fun this Christmas at the Love FM Smart Kids Party. Rate is 10 Ghana City State, Saturday, 23rd of December 2023. 9 a.m. sharp. Smart Kids Party. Run your bed, you dead, 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 dead. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Join us at the Arena of Christ Temple East as we bid farewell to 2023 and welcome our God year, 2024. Get ready to worship, praise, pray, and to experience the power of God through the ministry of Pastor Mensah Otabil. Receive the grace to recover all that which was lost. Recover lost time. Recover lost opportunities. Recover lost resources. You will recover all. Followed by a communion and anointing service that will equip us for the days ahead. By the power of the Holy Spirit, gathering, recovery, restoration, your life will be full and complete. Come along with your family, gather your loved ones, and let's do this together in faith, gratitude, and joy. Don't miss Crossover with Pastor Mensah Otabil at 9 p.m. It's a celebration like no other. There's a lot of excitement in the air as we are about talking about the Joy FM family uh, party in the park, which is returning this year on the 26th of December at the Ibri Botanical Gardens. This year's edition promises to be exciting and packed with a uh, lot of fun activities to aid family uh, bonding. And of course, we're so happy and delighted that Enterprise Live is one of our sponsors. And joining in this partnership, Raymond uh, Kwanza is the Regional Sales Manager. And Patricia Joko Kwe is head of uh, the Department of Customer Service. All joining us uh, to have a conversation on this, lady and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. They say ladies first, but let me start off with you. Uh, You're uh, welcome. Uh, you tell us ask. about yes, uh, enterprise life because we hear about it often. We hear about the art, of course. but a lot of people do not know about the yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah. You know, ent- enterprise life is mm. a member of enterprise group. Okay. Yes, and um, what we do currently, we are the leading life insurance provider in Ghana. And we provide life insurance uh, solutions to uh, individuals, um, um, families, uh, groups, and organizations. And we have some of the solutions like um, uh, family funeral finance plan okay. that uh, provide immediate cash for the, to, uh, to uh, pay funeral expenses of the loved one. We have family income security plan that makes sure that there's enough money in case the breadwinner yeah. Uh, fall sick or dies or any eventuality happens yeah. before the breadwinner that he cannot provide a regular income that he provides to the family. Yeah. We have education policy that also provides money to make sure the children return back to school or pay children's school fees. And we have many other policies like that. And in fact, I'm excited that you're saying you're the market lead and many yeah. will be wondering, well, if you're the market lead, why are you coming to support party in the park? So let's talk about, uh, about that. Uh, uh, why have you decided to you know, join join uh, the celebration and to support this this unique thing that we're doing. Okay, so you know, um, Party in the Park is a big platform, yeah. and it's been running for quite some time now. And you know, uh, in Enterprise Life, we continuously um, find opportunities like this, like program and activities, mm-hmm. uh, where we can connect with our customers, uh, serve them, and also um, answer their queries and introduce new, new solutions to them. So we feel like this p- particular program of your Party in the Park is equally a good platform where we can partner and meet our uh, good customers and prospects. 
I see. Yeah. Out there and, to and, meet them. I must say that's a laudable move, of course. Uh, you'll be meeting some of your old customers, and also it will be providing you with an opportunity to also meet the new ones. Yeah. So what do you have in store for you know, all of these customers that will be coming? Well, our clients are valued and cherished mm -hmm. to us. And um, like Raymond has said, we're a family-oriented organization. Um, most of our products are for different members in the family. We have the Bloom that caters. That's an all-female related product. We have the Funal product and all of those. We're expecting to meet our clients on that day yeah. to have a great interaction with them. We'll have a service desk set up. They can do inquiries, check on their policies, um, let us know if they have any concerns, if we can address those concerns. And then also, we will also walk them through our self-service tools and our Life Connect platform. So right. wherever they are, at their own convenience and ease, we'll walk them through how to use our tools. I so and there's this question as to whether or not there will be a special package for those who will be coming for your services there. Do you have any something, absolutely. a surprise? Maybe because it's also Christmas, you know, yeah. we're celebrating. Ab so. Absolutely. Yeah. We are coming with a lot of fun-packed souvenirs right. for right. them to take away. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful, very amazing. They'll definitely love them. Indeed. Uh, any final words, and I'll take that from both of you to, you know, your customers or your clients, those who are uh, even eager to know much more about the enterprise group. What, what, what would you want to leave them with. Okay, so we want to tell our cherished customers and prospects out there that they should join us at the family park uh, on 26th. We'll be there and we are coming fully with our sales team, uh, with the customer service team to provide good solutions. To interact with them, they should come with all the uh, questions they have, we'll answer them and also give them gifts. <laughs> I'll be there to take mine as well on the 26th. Any final words? Yes, um, I think one of the best gifts you can give to your family is mm. to ensure that your, the solutions you have with us are active, right. your valuable benefits are secure. So they should come join us, check on their policies. And then also they can reach us yeah. on our contact center number, 0307 4444. Probably you might have to be very slow with that so that okay. those who missed it can get it. 03 07 0844. For, for, for any inquiries they'd like to make. And of course, uh, when you just uh, show up <laughs> there uh, for the uh, party, definitely you'd be getting more uh, to, 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 to know much more about uh, the enterprise group. And I'm sure that they have so much in store for you. But uh, of course, I'm grateful that uh, you're all joining us and having this celebration uh, with us here on you're the course. And uh, of course, that's all we have for you in this package of the Pulse. I am blessed as we're going to log on to myjoyonline.com. More stories there for you. Bye bye.